Now, you know as well as I do, and, and it can't go live today, that Gamers Nexus is gonna do a teardown on this. I highly recommend you go watch his teardown. I'm not gonna do it. I'll do it. NVIDIA caught on to our tricks this year because we never do unboxing embargoes. We typically take the device apart on that day instead. That's how we open the boxes. It's not our problem that no one else opens boxes that way. But this time NVIDIA explicitly said, no teardowns, no PCB shots, no disassembly. They said, you can only show the card powered off and assembled. And we, we had ways around that too, but I decided to play along and today, we're gonna take apart the RTX 3080 Founders Edition card, which is either going to be the most difficult card I've ever taken apart, or before that, this video is brought to you by us and the GN Store for our 1 million subscribers limited edition foil t-shirt. The front has the GN logo and a gold play button like the ones YouTube sends out, and the back has our history on YouTube dating back over a decade. The shirt is custom made with a high quality 100% cotton and features a shiny gold foil. 1 million crept up on us way faster than expected. So these shirts are still in production, but you can guarantee you'll get one by back ordering on store.gamersnexus.net. Our previous limited shirts have sold out in just three to four weeks each time. And like those previous shirts, we'll be using the funding from our 1 million subs special shirt to purchase new testing equipment for our reviews. Back order the limited 1 million subs shirt on store.gamersnexus.net. So there's the card. Commence people talking about how I'm mishandling the card and too rough on it. Yeah, these things are a lot stronger than people think. So this is primarily metal. NVIDIA, huge credit this time for making complete functional use of its area available to it. So this will have thermal testing in the review. As of filming this teardown, all testing has been complete, but I haven't actually looked at the thermal data yet. So we're gonna be looking at this and trying to understand the performance, the air path, stuff like that. We have separate Schlieren imaging of the airflow to help visualize things in a, another video coming up. So you'll want to check back or subscribe for that one to see. Uh, we'll put a teaser in here of, of some of the effect for this specific card, but the analysis will be in a separate video. I'm getting like flashbacks to Google Stadia right now where they try to hide all the screws because screws are, are somehow unsightly. Uh, but NVIDIA's got the screws somewhere and when we find them, we're gonna need to do some quick torque testing to just kind of guess and check on what the torque spec is for each one so I can reassemble it with the same torque spec. And a couple things about this design. So first of all, in thermal testing so far, what we've noticed is that as you'd expect, the air largely comes out of this side. So you've got a lot of exhaust right there. You can see they've cut huge holes into the IO plate. This is a good thing that allows for air to actually get out. This is actually one of the things we've complained very commonly about with partner cards in the past. So Nvidia, we have given them so much criticism, is the nice way to put it, over the years for two things for their video cards. One is assembly and making it absolutely impossible to disassemble some cards, like the 2060 Founders Edition was one of the worst cards we've ever taken apart. And the other thing is a, an, an utter waste of real estate on the card to get a good cooling solution in place. This one, in the very least, has solved the waste of space part because these fins, they're not for looks. These are functional. NVIDIA's gotten rid of that acrylic plate it used to have over here, like with the 900 series onward. And it's gotten rid of that vanity plate on the RTX series where there was a mirror there. Instead, they have these fins, which in testing, they, they run hot. Uh, we'll find out. I'm not sure that air comes through those right now, but they definitely radiate as, I mean, that's what they're designed to do. So they radiate heat. There's a big heat pipe in there. There's another heat pipe right there. It looks like there's maybe four heat pipes I can see from here so far. And they are of the, maybe, that actually was very painful. I just dropped the card on my pinky. <laughs> they are, so it's, it's heavy, it's all metal. Uh, they are maybe eight to 10 millimeter pipes. We'll see that when I take it apart. And okay, let's start trying to take it apart. So first of all, the only screws I've seen so far are in here for the fan. Those should be some of the last things that come out. NVIDIA has actually sent out a disassembly guide, but I haven't really looked through it. I uh, glanced at it and decided we'll save the rest of it for doing it live. Oh, there you go. All right, step one. Oh, okay, cool. No, that, no breaking involved this time. That's nice. So this was held in with two 
uh, buttons. So these buttons were snapping into those two holes right there. Adjacent to the screws, those are Phillips head, looks like maybe PH0 screws. And uh, we've got our first side of the PCB as well. So that is step one, getting out this Y-shaped um, uh, ghost finder. And then step two is, I think, going to be figuring out, I'm either going to take these screws out or we're going to figure out these. These are obvious screw covers to me. I don't see a warranty void of removed sticker, which is actually awesome. Good job, NVIDIA, for doing better than a lot of your partners on not putting unenforceable, questionably uh, legal, legally questionable stickers on the device. But normally, you would find screws under those as well if we had them. So what I'm going to do for this, instead of trying to just pry it up, I think, this is, I think we're going to try something else. Well, that didn't work. OK, so we're going to try some glue. Uh, first of all, we are working on our medium mod mat, so that surface that is under the card right now. These are in stock and shipping. The large ones, which is under the medium one, uh, those are on back order right now on store.gamersnexus.net. But you know, let's put this on the spatula instead and poking a hole in it. But the medium ones are in stock. PC building services, they are anti-static. They're built in a factory that makes stuff for clean rooms. And we have tested them as anti-static conductive. And then also ships with a uh, common ground point over here and an ESD strap, which I'll tap throughout the process. Nice. Look at that. Oh, you suck. <laughs> Those are in there. Oh, got one. <laughs> Fucking big ass spear in the cart. <laughs> Uh, okay, so we got all four of these things out, but a couple things to cover here. So first of all, keep in mind that there's a very good chance that I'm one of the first people, at least not at NVIDIA, taking this thing apart. And NVIDIA did provide a guide, but uh, one, I'm kind of going at it from a user experience. And then two, the one part of the guide I actually read was the removal of those things. And they said to use adhesive on a stick which is what we did, and that's a bad idea. So these things are actually pretty simple. And if we get one of these, let me find, there we go. These two went into the top up here, and they're just caps for the screws, but they have small magnets on the inside of them. The thing that really sort of frustrates me about the guide for the page about these is that it doesn't mention magnets, and it just says use adhesive on a stick. So we used glue on effectively a stick. And the real way to get this out would have been a magnet. But that wasn't mentioned in the guide. So my advice to you, if you're taking one of these apart, is to get a, a very strong magnet and just sit it right on top of them, and they'll come out. I actually I socketed one of these back in, and then I used the magnet earlier, and it came out fine. So that's one option. If you can't get the magnet to work because maybe it's a little bit jammed in there, the next best thing to do would absolutely not be adhesive on a stick. I strongly disagree with NVIDIA's recommendation for that. Uh, my recommendation is adhesive on a strip instead. So tape, in other words. Uh, gaffer tape worked fine for one of these. And you could use maybe like duct tape, or we, we bought some Gorilla Tape as well to try that on one of the others too. So tape, and then tape applied to where they are, and then pull the tape out. It'll be really clean. You won't end up with any of the adhesive left behind that we had to deal with, like down here, for example, that, that part. The, the reason that NVIDIA's glue suggestion was a problem is that I almost, almost regret putting that in because I'm afraid. But the, it's fine now, though. So uh, basically, using the glue approach, uh, once you press down with the stick, if any of that glue gets inside the crevices surrounding this thing, then uh, you're kind of screwed. So I basically drilled out a small hole and then just stabbed it, and it came out. 
And that was the end of that. So, because a lot of you are probably new here and haven't seen these before, there's probably a lot of people who are like, oh my god, he's destroying that card. Let's discuss a few things. The PCB's fine, the card's fine, the GPU's fine. Everything uh, will work completely fine, especially once you see the review. Because it'll be obvious that, like, this thing, just taking it apart doesn't destroy it. We've had people who are so beginner to this stuff that they think simply disassembling something is destructive to it. The only thing destructive that's happened here is removing a tiny piece of plastic. And that doesn't hurt the actual card. And also, again, uh, you wouldn't have this content and the people who do want to disassemble it wouldn't have the advice of someone who's had to deal with a nearly catastrophic issue of the glue getting stuck. So, you know, it's kind of one or the other. But hopefully our goal is to produce a guide that is helpful so that you can learn uh, how to take the stuff apart, because I don't, I don't pre-disassemble these before the video. This is the first time I'm taking it apart. So this is the real user experience, except you'll be able to learn from it. Okay, so we've got four Phillips heads here. These are Phillips Zero. So we're gonna take that out. I guess I'm gonna actually start tracking the screws. Normally I don't track screws for like partner cards, because there's not that many, and they're all the same. But NVIDIA has done so much screwy stuff in the past <laughs> that we're going to track the screws because <laughs> they hide them all over the place. So that is taken apart. I think now this plastic's feeling pretty loose. So my next thing I'm going to do is take out the Torx heads here. And those look like 8 or 9 TR7 for these. There's four of them. I always hope that having the card like this makes people nervous. So there's the first one removed, the four. We don't have to deal with DVI screws this time. Those are like a hex five, I think. And we don't have to deal with the tiny display screws that are normally associated with these because uh, a lot of the times the display screws will kind of bolt the display out and support it into a base plate or a frame or even just the shroud for the board. Okay, that should remove. Yes. Nice. Oh, got it. The thermal pads are so sticky that I thought I was maybe missing a screw somewhere, but actually that was intended. That's actually the next step. Okay, thermal pad was throwing me off. So first of all, we have basically every thermal pad that exists here. Uh, so we're fine on this, but if you're taking apart any video card, but especially NVIDIA's reference cards, they like to use a lot of Fuji Poly type pads where they're, they've got this canvasy type material. That's fine. They're really good, but they're very easy to tear. We're fortunate here because uh, they didn't tear during removal of the plate. So when you remove these things with like fragile thermal pads on them, you should generally get the heavier part down so that you're fully in control of how much torque is being applied and uh, then you should be fine. But um, if you need to replace them because you tear them, look up Fuji poly pads. That'd be pretty similar. Make sure you get the same thickness. I guess we'll determine what that is. So 1.0, 1.0, and then a bunch of two mils. They might be compressed a little bit too. It's a rubber damper down here. There is a huge amount of power filtering filtration here. We're going to have Buildzoid look at this in a PCB analysis. But all these caps all over the place, first of all, they've shortened the PCB, so they have to go somewhere, and a lot of them have ended up on the back. Uh, caps in the socket will help with output filtering. So we'll have him look at all that stuff. Uh, I do have the torque spec on these. I received it via email from NVIDIA while we were working on this. So we'll be able to put those back in at exactly the same torque spec. And I'll get out a torque driver in a bit and look at that. OK, now I think there's, I've spotted three cables that concern me because they're very thin and uh, at risk of breaking, if not disconnected carefully. So we're going to do that next. These are like the laptop ones. There's that little gate, that black gate right there. That has to come up before you remove the cable. How's this one? Oh, that one's got a, uh, a metal gate. Okay, that's removed. So we should be able to disconnect all of these safely now. Okay, that's safely disconnected. So a little ribbon cable, you can see the pins down there. 
All right, that's out. Okay, time to take the rest of it apart. I know at least, at least two or three people, specifically at NVIDIA, one on the engineering team behind the, the cooler watching this, and I hope that every time I get the drill out, they're just going, ah, no, why? All right, so uh, yeah, it's a leaf sprain. There's four screws. So these are Torx 6, just check that. I emailed NVIDIA as well and asked them, what's the Torx spec on these? And let me read that to everyone, just for anyone who wants to keep it as close to factory as possible. So they started off talking about the amount of screws in the card being reduced this time, and we've noticed that. Really good job, NVIDIA. We'll talk about that more in a little bit. Uh, they also said that these four screws should be in the range of two to two and a half inch pounds of force. So let's go ahead and get these out. I've got a torque driver for, actually we need to do this thing first. I, I left out that cable. I've got a torque driver to um, reinstall them later. Wow, what a colossal pain in the ass. Okay, that cable you need to be very careful of. It took me a while. Because uh, I was trying to, you really don't want to just like assume a direction on these and, and rip at it because those are very tiny wires. They won't survive. Um, so this one, I basically took the smallest pair of tweezers I have. These are from Taiwan. They're amazing. Uh, the, the brand is Engineer. I'm sure that's really helpful in finding them. Uh, so... I shoved it in under and then just kind of pushed up. And as soon as I got it up a little bit, I pulled it back out. And that's because there's a set of two pins in there. So you're trying to both not bend the internal pins up and not rip the wires out. So it takes, give it a, have some patience with that one. Let's go here with the correct screwdriver. So here's a Torx 6. This one's actually from our toolkit. Although I would recommend several extra tools for this particular card, like very fine tweezers, for example. So I'm just gonna go about 30% looser on each side until it's removed. And I go in a basically diagonal pattern. And there's one. Oh wait, no, I think the PCB should be free, so because the, uh, all the screws are gone, so it should just be thermal paste and pads holding us in. Let's do a heavy side down to encourage the thermal pads to stay on the cooler. Make my life easier later. Oof. Nice. Okay, so now what I'm doing, just to explain why I've stopped here, I disengaged all the thermal pads and the paste, and my next step is I always look between the PCB and the cooler to make sure there are no additional cables that I'm going to rip if I pull this out. And we're good on that. I'm glad we're filming this. This is going to be uh, interesting to reassemble. PCB, there it is. There is the RTX 3080. Paste. Looks like a Shinetsu or a Dow Corning paste. A lot of people are talking about this. There are a ton of people who are saying, oh, it's so ugly, the power cable's in the middle of the board, or it's in the middle of the cooler, you know, because it's at the end of the board. And why can't you just route it, like, over here to the end of the cooler? Well, <laughs> NVIDIA did that with the 2060, and it was an absolute nightmare. Because then you have these huge, like, soldered lines running so it's like wires that are soldered in w with the biggest globs of solder i've ever seen running over to the end of the board that's like going over and under things at the same time so you have a very good chance of damaging something in the process of removing it this is better than doing that nvidia makes the signal integrity argument too i mean i i don't know i the only thing i actually want to point out is that moving this to the end does not make the life better of anyone who ever opens a card. So it's good that that's where it is this time. Uh, that is an improvement. So there's no memory modules on the back. I would suspect there, there may be a shuffling around of components for the 3090 because uh, it is running more than two times the memory of this one. 
We've got this interesting pin out here. I'm gonna have to figure out what that goes to. That looks like, oh, I see, okay, it's pin to pad contact, which is always ideal. So this is better than a cable. They could have done a cable here, they didn't, and that means that it's a lot safer to take it apart because you're not gonna have a cable rip when you take it apart. The pads that those pins are going to are right there. So there's the pads. I'm assuming that's gonna be lights or fans, but we can figure that out once we take this assembly apart and figure out where these go. That looks like simple power. That might be, that might be the LED, I think, for GeForce RTX right there. We'll find out in a second. So uh, thermal pads are pretty much all on one side. That's nice, makes it easy. I'm gonna send board photos of this to build Zoid before we reassemble. Uh, before people ask, yes, this is normal. And yes, sometimes the missing module does move around depending on what part of the GPU they're disabling for the bend, you know, the cut down versions, I should say. Uh, so, oh, there's a shunt resistor right there. Let's figure those out. Here's what we're gonna do. We are going to do a continuity check against the legs of the shunt resistor to the 12 volt on uh, the power side. I see planes. Okay, so each of these sets of pins is hooking up to just one big plane that carries them down. So that means I don't need to probe individually into the sockets, the pins. So we can just check each one of these until we find a 12 volt. Let's start here because this is almost definitely going to be for the power cable. Do continuity. So it appears like it's uh, this smaller leg right there is continuous with the shunt resistor. Either way, that's uh, that shunt resistor will go with that pinout. I have not tried shorting this yet, so maybe don't get ahead of me and, and do it until you see someone else do that. It's very dry. Um, because ideally you, uh, you, know, you let someone else see how the card reacts because it's different this time. I think that goes to the PCIe slot. So, we've determined that. I'm gonna leave the actual board components to build Zoid. This video is gonna be long enough as it is and he's good at that stuff. I think the thrown pace might have changed. I need to ask them about that. Maybe not. They normally use stuff that's pretty much all the same anyway. At least generationally, not, not really a place you see huge improvements. Always be careful if you're like cleaning out paste alongside the edge of a sil piece of silicon because you can see all these service mount devices over here. HBM, you have to be careful even not to scratch it with your fingernail. Super dry. So GA102-200-KD-A1. GA102 is going to be the larger of the die sizes. Later we'll probably see a 104 and a 106. There's a 100 also, which is the largest, but is a like a data science type of card, and uh, was also revealed several several months ago. That that piece of silicon, the 200 designation is kind of like a subclass. Normally, when Nvidia creates spin-offs of the same uh, physical piece of silicon, but maybe cuts some components off, like say the 2060 KO, you'll see that second set of digits change for that. Um, the KO is an EVGA product, not a, an NVIDIA one, but it uses an NVIDIA um, variant on the original 1080 silicon. It was just been, there was a cut down. KD, I'm not actually sure exactly what that means. K is, uh, well, they had a few different SKUs last time where they had those A SKUs that you paid a little bit more and you got a higher bin chip. And I think that eventually was killed as a product and they just rolled them all into one. And then A1 is going to be the revision, I think. So that's copper, that's copper, cold plate, nickel plated. Actually, you can see, <laughs> you can see the uh, NVIDIA text imprinted on it too. But that's the cold plate. Cold plate's connected to a vapor chamber. Vapor chamber is connecting to heat pipes that we will better be able to see if we, if we um, remove these from each other. Oh. That thing finally came out. I don't know where I am anymore. <laughs> I don't know where the PCIe slot is. All right, it's down here. Okay. 
So that's towards the right edge of the card traditionally because this is a pull fan. So this goes over here. No, oh, that's promising. The other side should just pull through. Jesus, finally. So that's what I meant by latch in two directions. Oh, okay. I see what you mean. Yeah, because it was getting stuck, right? Man, what a pain. Okay. Rulers, I guess, were the answer. Thanks. Okay. So I had to get Patrick in here as well. This was a multi-person project to figure out, but this, uh, basically there's three clips to deal with. This one, which you could just push. You can see the, the uh, scars from where we're hitting that one. That one that you push. This one we ended up having to find the ruler and like right here, just shove that through. So Patrick shoved that through to depress both of those at the same time because it latches two directions. Then it came out, finally. So that was the answer. Now, fortunately, you're never going to have to do that part if you're just replacing the cooler or you're replacing the paste. This step was unnecessary for that, but for purposes of what we do here, it's something we wanted to know about. Uh, so this thing gets very hot. It is a large piece of metal. That makes sense. It's part of the heat sink. In a sense, we're not sure if it's intended more for looks or for function. It seems like it's more for looks and maybe the secondary benefit is function, but uh, there's, there's not really any or much direct contact with the fin stack when this is on, hence the more for looks. And at the same time, you're not really worrying about this blocking airflow because the air is not flowing through here. It's going straight through the card on one side. And then on the other side, it's going out the back of the case for the most part. Now we can finally understand, though, the airflow patterns. This is why I wanted that thing taken apart. So the airflow patterns, uh, part of what we were seeing, because of this shroud, the housing around the fan, um, most of the air is going down and then getting directed. And it's going to follow the fin path. So fins are oriented this way. The air is going to go down, and it's going to disperse left and right in this orientation, most of it going out of the case. And uh, some of that, because of just the, the fan spinning, kind of sucking air in through the sides as well, you're going to get some air pushed this way, pushed that way. And in our Schlieren photography we took and the other content piece coming up, you can actually see a bit of a vortex formed down here near the motherboard where uh, the air is kind of coming out warm and then re-entering over here and getting pulled through. Not a big deal, something you know, we'll talk about in other content. Uh, the heat pipes, so there's four copper heat pipes. In fact, you can see that it's copper right there, not that you'd ever use anything else, but uh, that wasn't us, by the way, that's manufacturing. And um, it looks like the air, you have a little bit of air coming through here, through the underside. Uh, it's gonna be hard to film, but there's sort of a black wall at the top of this, but there is a path it can get through on the bottom. This, I think, is mostly for radiation, for conduction and then radiation and uh, less about air flowing through it. So you can see there's direct contact, the VRM here, and uh, memories over here as well. And then you've got other VRM components over here. So that's definitely doing stuff because it's conducting into a base plate, into a heat pipe, and then that heat pipe is probably soldered to the fin stack, so there's where your heat transfer is even without the airflow. One thing I was thinking of is adding like an 80 mil fan here, it'd probably do a lot. But uh, anyway, that's the orientation for all that stuff. And then for this one, it's just pulling air straight through the front. So that is one hell of a cooler assembly. NVIDIA found a way to use basically its entire card real estate as a cooler instead of a shroud, which is a move in the right direction. Uh, for comparison, we're going to have to test other 3080s. We could tell you how it does versus previous cards we've tested, but it's relevant because it's a different power load. So we'll have to look at this versus other 3080s and normalize for power to the best of our ability and normalize for uh, noise level to the best of our ability. And then we can tell you if this design is actually good, uh, comparatively, that is. So that's it for the teardown. That uh, 
wasn't really much easier. I would say that the second time through, this would be much faster for me. Whereas with the 2060s, the second time through, it's just as miserable as the first time. So things NVIDIA has done well. NVIDIA has completely capitalized on its real estate for the cooler. That doesn't mean it's necessarily a good design or that it's a competitive one, but absolutely it's better than the previous reference card designs or Founders Edition designs. Uh, as for whether it's a good design, that's something we'll discuss ongoing. That's not really a one-off. We'll have thermal numbers in our review of the FE, but we need to look at it comparatively and also in a wide variety of scenarios. That's going to take uh, at least a couple of days of testing, if not longer. So uh, we'll, we'll come back with reporting on that. But definitely better use of space. It's not like frivolous plastic shrouds and mi mirrors for RTX. The assembly overall is significantly easier. So total screw count, at least the ones in front of me right here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, uh, 16. 16 screws that I at least see right here, and then four small pieces of plastic. But we only have three. But there's supposed to be four. Uh, there's one on the floor somewhere, I think. So 16 screws, significantly better. Serious, like not exaggeration. If I remember correctly, it was legitimately about 70 something, 72, 73 screws for the 2080 or one of those cards we took apart last time. So uh, NVIDIA listened. That's impressive. It's, it's more than a lot of companies whose stuff we review will do. Um, now, as far as whether it's good, we'll talk about that later. One last piece I didn't look at was just an LED module here in the middle. Not that important. This black and yellow cable is, in fact, the GeForce RTX LED. If you happen to break this in disassembly, not a big deal. You lose your LEDs. Uh, and you could probably fix it pretty easily. It's only two cables, two wires. And then the others are for the fans. And, uh, and that's about it. So. Thanks for watching. You can go to store.gamersnexus.net to support this type of content directly, like by picking up our mod mats. The medium mod mats are in stock and shipping now. The large are on back order. Toolkits are on back order as well. And if you place your order in, though, for one of those, you'll be guaranteed to get one in the next round. You can also subscribe. You can go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus. And we'll see you all next time.